What's up, my people? Even I can trade here. I wanted to go through a video that I found. Um, what I like to do is go through people, the naysayers, the people that, you know, do not advocate for the style of trading that I'm trading, that they, they say, don't do it. Do this other thing. Here's why you shouldn't. I like to see content like that and people making those cases so I can see flaws in the way that I trade so I can clean it up, refine it, make it better, or just challenge my own orthodoxy to make sure that I'm doing the most efficient type of trading that I can do or learn something new. I'm always trying to learn something new to make what I'm doing better, right? And in doing so, I came across this video um, by a channel called Text Trading. And um, I've got some issues that I wanna go through with you, uh, some issues that this gentleman has identified with zero DTE spread trading. Um, and I've got some, I wanna talk about it with you to kind of see what he's saying, why he's saying it, and how to possibly make your trade uh, spread trading better um, to avoid some of the issues that he's bringing up and to kind of talk about his version of what to do instead. He wants you to not sell zero DTE SPX options. I still want you to, and I'm going to tell you based on what he's saying in his video, why in my opinion, it's still better for a lot of folks. One thing I do wanna clean up right now is that there is no panacea, there is no perfect, there is no one way. Um, so everything works and everything has flaws. Every style of trading has flaws. Everything has an Achilles heel. Uh, that's what makes the market. There's two sides to every trade, right? There's always gonna be a winner and a loser on one side or the other side of a trade. So what I want to identify here is what he's saying, why I believe that he, in, at least in this video, does not seem to um, present zero DTE trading in the best light and how to make it better, even in his scenario. So I'm going to go ahead and start this video and we're going to see what he's talking about. Type of trading. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you an example of what can happen when you use a strategy like that and really a better way to essentially day trade the S&P 500. All right. So as always, guys, I really do appreciate you watching. Let's roll that intro and uh, jump. So I'm going to come in, you know, somewhere down here. And you know, so right. I'm where you're saying, hey, I think that the market is going to stay somewhere in between this zone. So I'm going to come in, you know, somewhere down here and, you know, maybe I'm going to short 10 puts here and then I'll you know, I'll buy 10 puts below that for protection. And this creates a put credit spread here. Um, and you could just do that. Or you could also do like an iron condor, you know, capture both sides of the trade. You could come over here and, you know, maybe short 10 calls right there. And then you're going to go up here and you're going to go long 10 calls. All right. So really quickly, what he's saying right now is that is the basis of spread trading here is you're just trying to play keep away. Like I always say, you want the market, you want to identify the tops and the bottoms of where you think the market is going to go. And you want to sell premium outside of there, um, expecting the market to stay away from your position as much as possible. So that's what he's talking about here. Above that, right? So this would be an iron condor. You're basically looking at a call credit spread on the top side and a put credit spread on the bottom side. And, you know, zero DTE traders that use this strategy will, you know, often use one or both. Okay. And the idea here is Correct. that when you're trading uh, option contracts that are set to expire that day, um, you want to essentially collect credit on option contracts that are out of the money, betting that they're going to expire out of the money, and then Absolutely. you get to keep that credit that you collected, right? Because Correct. option contracts are priced in three different ways. They're priced on the uh, the price movement of the of the underlying that they're tracking. They're priced <clears throat> by time because they have an expiration yep. date, so there's a yep. time value to those option contracts. True. And as they get to expiration, all of that time value has to come out of those option contracts. Correct. And they're also priced by volatility. Yep. But the biggest thing that uh, option sellers, in particular this type of strategy, are looking for is that time, right? Yep. They're looking to uh, collect the a, a credit from the, the remaining time value that are in those contracts 
and then basically getting to keep that, yep. betting that they will expire out of the money and they get to essentially keep all that time value that they sold. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll sell the credit spread somewhere near the open, right? So the no. SPX last Friday, no. which was, a, of course, an expiration day, it opened, uh, it opened up here, right? So this is the biggest flaw, in my opinion, in this video. Now, yes, you can sell right at the open, but... I am going to take issue with the fact that usually spread traders trade right at the open. We all know the open is a mess. We all know the open is going to whipsaw you all kind of places and you have no idea what's going to go on. Now, the traders that do trade on the open, they accept the fact that they're going to get whipsawed because on the open, you're going to be able to get the greatest distance away from where the market is in general at that open because there's so much uncertainty in the day you have no idea how the day is going to turn out therefore option prices are at a very high point at that point in the day so you're going to be able to get usually pretty far away from the market relatively speaking on the open because nothing has happened yet so uncertainty is at its highest therefore premiums are at their highest in general on open but to say that spread traders generally trade on the open that depends on the trader the traders that do that's their game and they understand the whipsaw that can happen on the open and they usually are prepared for that with stop losses um but that's a, one assumption that i'm gonna have to take issue with there so somewhere around the open they go ahead and open a credit spread and bring in some credit uh, for doing that, right? So let's say they come down here. Uh, they're thinking that this 4,600 level should hold, right? This is a big psychological level. There's a lot of technical reasons to like it. Uh, it was the, the the top of a gap. We'll look at it here in just a minute. But let's just say that uh, they're playing off of the um, the same thesis that that 4,600 level is going to hold. So uh, at the open, they come down here and they sell a put credit spread. And you know maybe they do a call credit spread as well, but let's just look at the put credit spread as an example. So they sell a put credit spread somewhere down underneath that 4,600. They're able to bring in some credit on that. And they're saying, hey, look, I don't care what SPX does. It can trade down, it can trade up. It oh, we care what it does now. Uh, <laughs> we do, but um, essentially if you're talking about just just at the lens of expiration um i guess you could say we don't care but we do care what the 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 index is doing throughout the day especially if you're trying to trade on the open because if you're trying to trade on the open generally you're not holding to expiration you're closing out early um trying to get you know that whipsaw to work in your favor so that's definitely going to uh the, what the market does is definitely going to influence if, whether where you're able to close out or if you have to hold out a little bit longer or adjust or whatever it can trade sideways as long as it doesn't come down through my credit spread here then i'm a happy camper i'm going to get to keep that credit that expires uh, out of the money uh, at the end of the day okay again if your game is to try to hold it throughout the end of the day which a lot of traders are not because closing out early definitely lowers your risk but let's go. Now, even if they don't hold it to the end of the day, you know, say they get a move okay. favorable for their spread and they close this, you know, they close the trade for a 50% profit. Okay. I'm going to show you why that's still, in my opinion, a bad, bad trade, right? Let's go. So here you go at the open, they open this put credit spread and then SPX does what it's, it dumps, right? It's dumps and it sells off straight do down that. to 4,600. Now here's the problem with this, right? On zero. Now I want, I want you to watch where he places his alternative trade at later on in the video so this is not going to be apples to apples he set up this particular trade almost to fail but his trade is going to be placed differently watch dte options the gamma risk is incredibly high so what Correct. gamma is is basically the rate of change of delta and delta is telling you how much the option contracts are going to lose or gain in value based on every one point move in the underlying. Correct. So, so what he's talking about here is kind of like the avalanche effect. So a move, a one point move up here against you is going to be much milder than a one point move down here, the closer that you get. So the closer that you get to your position against your position, the bigger the snowball against you gets. Um, and, and the larger your loss 
on paper is going to be until theta starts to take over later on in the day. Um, so he is correct here. So as the uh, SPX sells off and your put credit <clears throat> spread is open down here, you're going to start going underwater on this spread very quickly because the gamma is incredibly high on the day of expiration. And as SPX sells off, the delta on these contracts down here are going to be increasing rapidly. Yep. And because of that high gamma, they're going to, they're going to, the delta is going to increase much more rapidly than they would if you had say more time to expiration. Now, typically what a lot of people will do when they sell credit spreads like this or do iron condors, you know, they'll sell it 30, 40 days out, right? When there's still a lot of time value left in those option contracts. And then they'll typically hold it for a while, maybe close it for a 50% profit or something like that. And uh, in a case like that, if you still had 30 or 40 days left till expiration and you did the same thing, you open the spread here at the open and the SPX dumped down like this, you you're going to go of red, gamma. of course, on the position, but not nearly as red as you would if it was zero days to expiration. Okay. So that's something really important to understand that I don't think a lot of these people really do grasp is the, do. the huge gamma risk potential. So, you know, why put yourself at risk of that huge gamma? when you could actually buy options and use that gamma to yeah, your benefit. Course. So as an example, let's just price out. Now watch this. Out, uh, a structure like this, right? So let's say that, you know, we're playing off this idea. Let's look, look at our hourly chart over here. Okay, we can see that, you know, why is this 4,600 a big level? Because it's the bottom of a gap, right? SPX had this big gap up, it traded higher, it came down, never filled the gap completely here, bounced back up, and then here it was coming back down towards the gap. So 4,600, big psychological hole number, uh, bottom of the gap, you know, nice extension and in coming into it. It makes sense that that would definitely be a major support level, okay? So here you can see where... S so he still agrees with that same support level that the spread traders... Uh, thesis was based on. He still agrees with that same support level. SPX opens and it trades right down into the gap absolutely perfectly. Fine. Now he hasn't traded yet. Finds a nice one, two, three reversal setup and then rips faces off. Okay. Now, if you were to open a credit spread up here at the open and you're betting that 4,600 should be the bottom, you know, maybe you come somewhere down here and you open a credit spread, you know, somewhere down in this neighborhood. And based on where you were up here at 4,650, you know, you're going to be trying to get 50, 60 points out of the money in order to give yourself a little bit of breathing room right here. Okay. Correct. Now, the pricing isn't going to be ideal because it's a weekend and we're not looking at uh, you know the actual day of expiration, but this is the next expiration day, which is Monday of next week. And then the other thing is that the SPX is current where where SPX is currently trading at is a different price than where it opened on Friday. But I'm just going to show you an example. We're going to go 50 points out of the money, right? So SPX is trading at 46.20. So we're going to have to go to somewhere like 45. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to go somewhere like 4560, 70. 4570 ish, I guess, somewhere right in this neighborhood. Um, what a lot of these uh, zero DTE traders will look for is try to get somewhere closer to a 10 delta. So let's sure. just do that, right? So we can see the delta here, so maybe 4550, right? So that gets us close to a 10 delta. So a lot of these zero DTE traders will go down to around a 10 delta to open their spread because that gets them really far out of the money and it gives them the higher probability of profit trade, right? So that's the whole idea with these zero DTE trades is they're a very high probability of profit, but let me show you something, right? So this is, you know, this again, it's not ideal pricing, but here we go. The mid price is 95 cents on this spread. We're shorting a 12 delta here, and then we're coming in for protection, uh, two strikes below that, and we're buying the 4540. So we're shorting the 4550 put, and we're buying the 4540 put. All right, so this creates our put vertical spread here. And basically what we're saying is, you know, if we could get this filled, we would be bringing in a $95 credit, and that is also our max profit on that. So that's about 10% on your money, 10% on your money for that one day. A trade, right? The most we can make on this trade, if we held this till the end of that expiration day and SPX closed above that spread, we would get to keep that full $95 credit that we collected. However, look at this ridiculous max loss, right? If we're wrong and SPX trades and closes down underneath of our spread, we're looking at a $905 loss. So that's like what? If you hold it, if you have no stop loss discipline, if you do nothing, if you sit there and look at it, 
if you let it expire that way and the market rips all the way down, which it can, uh, yes. You know, 10 to 1 uh, in the inverse of what you'd want, right? You're risking 10 to make 1. So the risk to reward on these trades is absolutely atrocious, of course. But the give and take is that you have a very high probability of profit, right? You have a 94% probability of profit because Thank we're essentially looking at... Thank you for saying that. Give and take. Give and take. Shorting a 12 delta. So that's telling us that there's only a 12% chance that, you know, SPX is going to close over the short strike down here at 4550. Okay, so... That's what these guys are doing, right? They're coming in and they're shorting the, you know, uh, they're basically cre selling credit in the mm -hmm. form of a credit spread really far out of the money, somewhere close to a 10 delta. And uh, they're betting on the fact that the SPX is not going to come down through that spread and that they're going to essentially get to keep that time value that they're selling in those contracts. Um, and for, you know, for a very high probability trade, but again, you know, $95 is the most they could make if they held it till expiration. A lot of the times they might close it for maybe 50% of that. So maybe you close it for like, you know, I don't know, $40 profit or something like that, $45 profit. Um, once you get there and you're still, but you're still looking at a, a terrible risk reward trade to put it on, right? Even if you take it off for 50% profit, if you get a favorable move, um, you'll be able to do that. But if you don't. You're going to you still be facing this maximum loss. And here's the catch, right? Yes, you could take it off before your max loss gets hit. But, the but because of the high gamma, okay, because of the high gamma, it's going to be very difficult to do that. So let's go back to the chart here and let me show you this, right? So let's say that you put that spread on, you know, here at the open and then SPX does this. It dumps down, right? So even though your spread is, you know, so again, trading at the open for the the straw man argument here if you trade at the open somewhere down here right you're spread somewhere down here out of the money you're expecting 4600 to hold even though it's you know it's it's relatively safe or you think it's relatively uh, safe as the S&P 500 sold off your spread's going to start going underwater and very quickly because of that high gamma, right? So by the time the SPX bottoms down here at 4,600, even though it hasn't gotten to your spread, you're gonna be getting very close to your max loss. You're gonna be underwater hundreds and hundreds of dollars, okay? And again, all of that to make $95 at best if you held it till expiration because of that high gamma risk. So if SPX gets down here to 4,600 and this doesn't hold and it keeps selling off, there's just no way that you can adjust out of that loss because there's no time. There are ways to adjust out of that loss. Um, and you don't have to pour a ton of uh, capital into it, like he's going to say, to get out of there. Um, there's still time to roll. It's still early in the day here. Um, there's ways to get out of it without um, killing yourself. Um, I would say if it's right on your... If it's right on your number, it's going to be a lot tougher. But this, you're, you still got, uh, what's that, 20 points uh, to work with here. If you start to panic, even though you were expecting that number to hold anyway, which it did. Um, so I disagree. I'm left in the trade. Those contracts are expiring that day. So there's just... There's just no real easy way to adjust out of that trade without throwing a shitload more capital at it. And at what cost, nah. right? At what cost? You You're roll. already risking 10 to make one. That's just ridiculous. So rather than coming in and selling credit spreads, like I get why people like to do it because it's easy in the sense that you remove that time factor from the options, right? Because because those options have that time factor if you buy option contracts you have to be right on both price and time so of yeah. course it can be it can be more difficult if you don't have the experience to line up price and time it's not about experience. Um, for taking trades then buying options can be very difficult and risky because you have that time that works against you right that time value is coming out of those contracts but if you sell option contracts the time value coming out of those option contracts is beneficial to you but again, with that huge gamma risk, if you get the stock that moves, you know, in the wrong direction, it moves toward your spread, you're going to go underwater 
quickly, like very quickly. I'm not even kidding how quickly you'll go underwater on that, right? So um, it's just not worth that risk. So rather than to doing you. that, if you're you're you know you're playing off this forty six hundred dollar level, if you get the move down to forty six hundred down here, rather than trying to sell a credit spread, why not Look just at this. buy option Look at contracts, this. right? So Look over here I have switch. the forty six hundred. Look at the bait and switch here, right? So the straw man trade he's setting up here. Uh, if you sold your spread at the open, then the market moved against you after you're already in the position. Bad, bad, bad. But for his trade, uh, let's wait till the move already happens. Then buy our magic option right at the bottom of the day. And then you'll make a whole bunch of money and your risk reward and all this kind of stuff is going to be so much better. Um, okay. Um, if I had a crystal ball, I would do that all day too, right? If I could see this, you know, 40 point move in five seconds coming up, I'm going to sell my grandma's house, buy a whole bunch of calls and then move to the Maldives, right? But we're not talking about knowing that this move is coming and having all this foresight. Um, if you waited, if you place the trades, if you place the spread trade here, at the same time as you bought the call here, number one, you're immediately going to start in the green with your spread. If you wait till this move is finished, which is what I advocate for, is waiting for the market to make its move, then you place a spread. Um, so, so the market is exhausted out of that move first or attempting to work out all that market energy out of the market first, then you can place your spread trade even lower, maybe down to the 4,500 level or something like that, and then have a massive buffer between where the market is and where you are. And then you can just take a nap, right? Or you could just happen to know that this green move is coming and then put mortgage your house and then buy a whole bunch of calls. But guess what's going to have to happen for that call to work? You're going to need a massive move like this to make a profit on buying options because of that time premium that you're talking about. When you buy an option, the option comes, you're paying for that time premium up front. So you're going to need the market to move in your direction just to break even. If the market trails sideways after this move, guess what? You're out of luck. You've lost your investment at that point, right? So it's not apples to apples what he's talking about. If you bought that same call option at the beginning of the day like you did for the spread, guess what? You're out all of your money just like uh, with the with the spread, but with the spread at the end of the day, guess who wins the spread if you bought it at the same time, right? If you bought that call option or whatever um, purchase that you're trying to make, thinking that the market is going to go up on the open, the only trade that's going to win is that spread that you that you're saying not to do. It still wins. It might go negative, but the theta takes over, and guess what? It never touched. It never came close to touching. Uh, your spread. So at the end of the day, spread is green, buying a call is red. And all of that, um, all of that uh, uh, risk reward ratio goes out the window then. Of course, your risk reward ratio is going to be a trillion to one if the market goes straight up every single day, every single time. But that's not the way the world works because we don't have crystal balls. So that trade-off about having, you know, 95% um, probability of profit and you're trading off uh, your risk-reward ratio in order to get that probability, a lot of us like probability because we realize that we can't time the market. Can't time the market. Oops, I bought, you know, I, I, I sold my put spread right here and I was wrong, but guess what? I still walk away with money. I bought a call. Uh, I bought a call option right here, thinking I could time the market. Guess what? I was wrong. Now I walk away with less money. And how much does it cost to buy an equivalent call option versus sell a spread? A spread you can get for five hundred dollars on the SPX. How much is an at the money call? I mean, you're talking about three, four, five thousand dollars for that. And that's if you don't buy a, a debit spread. If you just buy a straight up call option. And then half that call option is going to be what time premium that you spent that you, that the market is going to have to make back for you just to get to break even. 
That's why we don't do, that's why we don't buy options, right? So we sell premium and we rely on probability of profit because we're not profits. So put it, if you're going to, if you're going to criticize a, a type of trade, make sure that it's apples to apples. Make sure that you're being honest about what, what the, the, the prospects of the trade are. You're, you're trading at the literal best time of the day for the trade that you're advocating for. And you're, posi you're positioning a spread trade at like the worst time and the spread trade still wins. <laughs> the, spread tr the spread trade is still gonna win that day based on your example. And guess what? A person is going to be able to come back tomorrow and be wrong again. And they're still going to walk away with a profit where you might think on this on this next move. Oh, you know, let me go ahead and let me go ahead and buy a, a, a call up here or something like that. Or let me buy. Matter of fact, let me buy a call on this move right here. Let me buy a call on this green bar. The market seems to be going up right here, too. But guess what? The market faked you out on this one then you're walking away red with empty pockets where if you did a spread a put spread on this one you're walking away green right so spreads still win it's a game of numbers it's a game of how many trades that you can win because you have to get lucky you have to get lucky when you're buying it's just like buying stocks Trying to day trade with stocks is the same thing, except with call with call buying calls and buying puts. At least a stock, as soon as the thing goes up, you're in green. But with, when you're buying options, guess what? You got time premium that you have to make up first before you can even get to break even. So yes, if it if it the market shoots straight up into the stratosphere, congratulations. But bef outside of that, you're at the casino. Because you don't know that the market's, you don't, just like you said earlier, the market could s keep slamming right on down. It could pause right here, take a little break, slam right on down some more. And then guess what? You're out your three, four, five thousand dollars at that point for your call option. What adjustments are you going to make if the market does the same thing that you said is going to trash the put spread? What, what are you going to do then? You know, so keep it apples to apples. What are you going to do if you put the same exact trade on at the same exact time? What happens? Right. That's what frustrates me about this stuff. So let's be honest here. Let's keep it apples to apples. All right. Spread. This is why we trade spreads instead of buying stuff. Right. But that's what I wanted to show. Um, if you disagree, all good. Um, sh tell me why I don't claim to have all of the knowledge in the world. Um, I don't claim to be perfect. I don't claim to have all the answers or anything like that. Um, but you just want to mitigate your risk as best you can, best you can have your, uh, have your boundaries set up, stop losses, all of that stuff, uh, safety zones set up, trade safe, lose small amounts, not large amounts, live to trade another day. Right. That's how you survive this game. Not by hitting the home runs. OK. All right. That's all I had to say. Out.